empires gotta die, empires gotta fall, there will be no compromise, I want freedom for us all, pure as my cheekbones are prominent, you know, I'ma be mobbing on the continent, white supremacy's dominant here, my conglomerate's clear, it will disappear even in this hemisphere. This is in a historically black community, right? And it's important for this to be happening over here because there's a reclamation going on where people are intentionally trying to create cultural activity that's a reflection of not only the historic black community, but current black cultural expression in the city. I don't have an exit plan to stop us, then forget it. Tanzania is the bomb, I might be there before too long. I admire the environment. My name is Mike Crenshaw. I'm a cultural activist, so I'm combining my work as a hip hop artist, an educator, and a social justice activist. My creative process is lyric driven. Lyrics will come to me. It often starts with a line, you know? There'll be one line that will come to me and I'll be like, okay, how should that line flow into the next line? I thought about my whole world, decided I'm not a this. Some of these concepts are, the lines are things that I've been thought about, you know, forever. I started to toy with the idea of being a professional artist, but it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I started to take my desire to be a lyricist seriously. I'm in the fast lane, smashing, passing REs, 95 degrees against the breeze. Unpredictable smoothness, my vehicle moves with spectacular intergalactic crucial. The night at my back, there is no confusion. The wind in the road and the engine's music. All it really is is something to do. The rewards of knowing that everything is perfect. Divine time and alignment, refinement of purpose, the service of my central nervous system. In the 90s in the US, all the most popular rap was talking about getting money and selling dope and being rich. And I was like, that's not really who I am. Okay, play it again. So how do I become who I really am so that the authenticity of what I'm saying can be felt by my audience? That was when the political consciousness that had long been part of my development started to inform my lyricism. And I guess I became a political rapper. I'm in solidarity with those who seek their sovereignty. Turn around, heard the sound, a lot of folks yell and burn it down. A lot of us want to make it out. I'm like, what can I do right now? Thank you. Hey, we'll man. talk soon. Yeah, see you soon. Cool. I was born in Chicago on the South Side, 1970. You know, black urban life was what I was used to. I went to junior high in St. Paul, finished high school in Minneapolis, and went to a little college. The soft psychological violence of racism and feeling socially ostracized and the physical violence of being bullied and then having to stick up for myself time and time again. I think that's what shaped my desire to be uh, more of a rebel. And, you know, by the time I really felt like I fit in, it was only in the, the punk scene. When punk came and kind of intersected with heavy metal, it was like the political consciousness of the lyrics and I could relate to that. Ska being the original music of choice for skinhead kids that were actually not racist or were even anti-racist, that started to appeal to me as well. For the first time in my life, I had the kind of friends that I felt like knew what I, maybe not what I'd been through before I met them, but they knew what I was going through. We were all going through these things together. And that group of people, a uh, handful of us became anti-racist skinheads. I think at first, we decided to become skinheads as a way to do something edgy, something that appealed to us um, in an alternative sense. But it wasn't long before white power, neo-Nazi boneheads were being organized in our scene and in our city. And that gave us a very clear enemy to identify. We felt like we were fighting a war. And we were the only people who were going to do it because no one else was going to do it. That really helped shape my identity in ways that I just wouldn't be the same person if that didn't happen. Two of my teachers started to invest in my consciousness and, and my political development. And they were like, we see how driven you are. We see what you're doing on the streets, but you're going to be dead or in jail. You're facing the symptoms. What do you think about trying to learn about the root cause? Racism, 
white supremacy is a symptom, but the root causes of these things are deeper than that. It was the morning and I made this mistake that I'm still making sometimes. I picked up my phone and started scrolling on social media. And then I saw, well, I saw this video of this black man on the ground. I didn't have to watch too much of the video before I thought, damn, that looks familiar. The cruiser was familiar, the police uniform was familiar. And then I realized I was watching Minneapolis. I was realized I was watching South Minneapolis, which is an area I grew up. Realizing I was watching another black man being violently accosted by police. But I still didn't realize that at the end of the, you know, eight, nine minutes, he was gonna be dead. I had the day to process it, and I knew, I said, people aren't gonna stand for this. A fight is coming. Historically, as an artist, I've always confronted these issues. My primary creative choices have always been to tackle these issues head on. I've been in the streets using violence as a means of community defense and direct action. I've seen what happens when cycles of violence become so ingrained that there seems to be no end. If there's any wisdom that I can draw from these experiences, the best way for me as a human being to try to impact things in a positive way is to be creative and to use art. The collaborative project that I've been part of with young people that is combining activism and education and my ability to produce music is an album called Rose City Rising. And it's a collaboration on the production side between three different nonprofits outside the frame that teaches young people the arts of video production. Friends of Noise that focuses on making sure that there are all age venues and opportunities for young people to perform live music across the city. And then funding resources that are tied to Portland Public. I picked this beat and I wrote a BLM song to it. And after I did that, Mike Crenshaw is, was also on the song. He made the hook. Mike Crenshaw has brought us all together on this uh, compilation album to talk about all the events of last year and how it affected us, how it affected the world, and to um, focus our creativity on that. So tonight, as part of the premiere of the films that Outside the Frame have been working on, good films about a bad year, these students that created these songs, we got music videos produced for, are going to premiere them on this big screen. The youth took matters into their own hands. Uh, I hadn't seen the music video before, so it was just nice to see how it turned out. It was amazing. It was one of the best things I've ever done. Thank you so much for being part of the production. Half of my life at this point has been writing, performing, you know, touring, and being a hip hop artist and a lyricist. But now I'm venturing into literary forms of writing. PM Press, the publishing company, heard my story as a black skinhead and they offered me a book deal. And Black Skinhead, which is a memoir of my experience being a black anti-racist skinhead, a founding member of a formation called the Minneapolis Baldies, which was an anti-racist skinhead crew. I always want to be able to take what I'm witnessing and what I'm feeling and put it in a language that is concise. But the intent is to transmute the pain and try to create something beautiful. America, can you feel me? To the people where you at, no holler if you hear me. America, can you feel me? To the people where you at, no holler if you hear me. 
one of the things I'm doing now is I'm trying to understand some of the deeper issues. If we tend to want to put things in a binary where there's the good guy and the bad guy, and there's good and evil, and there's right and wrong, what are the things that we're hardwired to do as humans? How much is conflict something that we actually just have to live with? Is it a part of nature? And where are we going? Are we going to destroy our ability to survive on the planet? And is there a way to turn it around? So those are the questions I'm looking at. And we'll see where it takes, you know, the art going forward. America, can you feel me? Freedom fight.